score one, practice paper six, question number ten. So this is our last question of this paper, and the last question asked in our set of six altogether practice papers. If you check with the question paper, you might find I've written something slightly differently, but basically a function dash, f dash, is this expression. Line L has this as its equation, and it is tangent to this, to this. So this line is a tangent to the function f of x at the point P. State the gradient of the line L. The word state is very much like write down. It's actually implying you can do it without any working out whatsoever and I wouldn't expect you to, says the examiner. That's what the word state means. You write down the answer because I expect you to just know it. But as we're going over things, let's just have a look at it and see what I'm thinking. This is the equation that is line L. Let's make Y the subject by subtracting 3x from both sides. So we get 30 minus 3x or minus 3x plus 13. We should know the equation of a straight line is y equals mx plus c. c being where it cuts the y-axis at 0, 13. And m being the gradient, which is 3. So in fact you could write that down just by looking at that and doing that bit of thinking in your head. So that's quite legit. No working out needed but never any harm in doing working out to help you thinking. One mark for that. Let's move on to part B of question 10. Find the coordinates of this point P. So what have we got? We've got the tangent. This straight line is a tangent to the graph of y equals f of x. This straight line is a tangent to this graph at the point P. All we know so far is that the gradient is minus 3. And F dash, in other words, this differentiated, is this expression. So this is the gradient anywhere on this graph. So we're saying, when is the gradient minus 3? So therefore we can say, this implies that... At P, the gradient, which is anywhere on the graph, but at P, the gradient is going to be minus 3. So solving this equation should give us the x-coordinate at point P. So let's go for that. What should we do first? Let's add 4 to both sides, so that will be 1 over there. Let's multiply both sides by the root of x, which will give us that. Now let's square both sides, and that will give us 3 squared equals the root of x squared, which will give us 9 equals x. In other words, x equals 9. So that is the x-coordinate of p. x-coordinate of p. We need the y-coordinate now. So we don't know the equation of the curve, we don't know the actual function, but we do know the tangent, and we do know that this is the x-coordinate that we're considering. So if we substitute that value in there, so 3, 9 is 27. Subtract 27 from both sides, and that will give us minus 14. And something I've mentioned frequently for you to remember when you think you've got to the end of a question don't move on to the next part without considering the question have I finished this question so you go back and read it again and you go oh you look I haven't finished it really because I haven't written down what the coordinates of P are so P is 9 minus 14. Not writing that down really is not answering the question. Four marks there. So I think for making that statement about the gradient, 
and then going on to work out x and then going on to work out y and then lastly writing down the coordinate as the examiner has required. So that's part A and part B of question 10. I've written down that again. I've written that down again but I've added at the end what this chord of P is because I think we might need that to do part C. Find the equation of the curve. Now the equation of the curve is y equals f of x. But f of x equals the integral of f dash of x with respect to x. Therefore that equals integrating this expression of 3 over root of x minus 4 with respect to x. Now all of this I'm writing down here is sort of going over the top I suppose. But if the question goes wrong and I don't actually get the answer right I might get a mark for writing that down because at least that explains to the examiner I've got an idea I know how to do this question. And that's part of the exam. Telling the examiner you know what you're doing. Well I better see if I know what I'm doing. If I'm going to integrate that I think I'll have to rewrite it first. So let's rewrite that as, instead of x square rooted, I'll write it as x raised to the power of half. But even that's not good enough, is it? I've got to rewrite that as 3x to the power minus half. Now we can get going and integrate it. Whether you put all these steps down in your exam is entirely up to you. It is your exam paper. I would recommend it's not such a bad idea. Integrate. Raise that by one power, so it becomes plus a half, and divide by that new power. If you integrate the number 4, you'll get 4x plus an integration, a, a constant of integration. Always tidy up algebra, so let's multiply the top and bottom by 2, and we'll get a 6 on the top and a 1 on the bottom, which obviously we need not bother to write. Now, we can work out the value of c, the constant of integration, if we've got suitable information. And we have got said suitable information because we know that the curve passes through that point. So p is 9 minus 14. In other words, if we take the function, which we know is that, and substitute 9 into it, we will get ourselves minus 14. So let's substitute 9 into here. x raised power half means find the square root of. So we've got 6 multiplied by the square root of 9, which is therefore 3. I know it's plus or minus, arguably, but we'll just use the plus value, I think. 4 x's is 4 9's. So we've got an 18 there. So that's minus 18. Add 18 to both sides will give us that c is actually a value of 4. So there I think we have the equation of said line. Let's look at the marks on this. Mark for those two parts of the integration. We won't give a mark for c this time. We'll give a mark for actually working it out and a mark for the finished equation. So it's question 10 part C. Now we need part D. But on this free video clip I haven't got time to put in part D because that would take me over the 10 minutes. So I need to remind you that if you want to look at this exam paper and see not only the last part of question 10, in other words part D, see the whole exam paper and not only that have a chance to see the other two exam papers in the set and go through the DVD and see all of the answers not just 10 part the well, last part of 10 so if you're interested in core 1 set to the papers 4 5 and 6 visit my website www.mathstutor.biz and buy yourself a copy. That's the end of call one. 
maybe I'll do some call to and put that on YouTube as well.